And I understand that today is uh, uh, primarily a 4-H audience, and so just to remind everybody, I'm from uh, the USDA federal side of 4-H, and we're excited to bring this opportunity to you. As you know, when you stand up, you're, you're interested in finding out about Text Talk Act. And at a national level here at the federal USDA NEFA partnership, or partner in 4-H, we decided that this was an important opportunity to encourage 4-H to participate in at the local level. As you know, one of the three mission areas of 4-H on the national level is healthy living. And we feel that mental health is a key component to healthy living. The social and emotional well-being of young people and the adults they're working with is vital. We also know that many people feel it is very hard to talk about mental health, and they kind of shy away from that issue even though they know people that need support in that area. We also know that young people enjoy using technology in their communication styles, but they still like to talk. And what you'll find out about today is that this is a blend between technology and talking as far as communication, and has been very successful in reaching young people in sparking conversation about mental health. So as I mentioned, we're the federal partner in 4-H. You're most likely from one of the land-grant university partners in 4-H, connected either as a 4-H volunteer or staff on the local level or at the university level. One of our roles is to work with the land-grant universities and foster relationships with other organizations um, and provide opportunities for you to strengthen the 4-H programming. And as I said, we feel that healthy living is such an important part of what we do that when we became aware of this opportunity, we wanted to share it with all of you. So I welcome you. I encourage you to participate fully. Um, and we have a, a special uh, guest with us today, Raquel Goodrich, and she's going to go through what to expect over the next hour and introduce herself and uh, introduce us to Text Talk and Act. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for joining the webinar today. Uh, my name is Raquel Goodrich, as Doug mentioned, and I am the Text Talk Act Director at the National Institute for Discourse. I'll talk about the institute in just a minute, um, but before I do that, let me just cover a couple of housekeeping items. As you all likely realize, you're all on mute um, at this time, and we're doing that just to help minimize background noise. We do, however, want this uh, webinar to be as interactive as possible. So we have a couple of polling questions that we'll be asking of you all. And then if you have any questions, please go ahead and just enter them in the chat box as they come up. I'm going to pause throughout this webinar um, at this key point to help answer some questions um, that you all type in. The next thing that I want you to know is we are recording this webinar. So I will make this video available to all of the registrants. Um, feel free to share it with others if you think that there may be um, other members in your 4-H program that would be interested. And then throughout this webinar, I'm going to share with you a couple of different links for Tech Talk Act, um, basically web links. And I'll be sure to include those links in the email that I send out to you all. So don't worry about um, jotting them down uh, unless you want to in, you know, during the webinar. So the things that we're going to cover today um, include just a little bit of background on creating community solutions. This is part of the National Dialogue on Mental Health. And the Text Talk Act program um, came out of creating community solutions. So I just want to make sure you all have the broader context of the work that we have been doing. Uh, and then I'll talk about the collaboration between Text Talk Act and 4-H that's happening this fall. I were really excited to be working with the 4-H and really looking forward to see how well Text Talk Act fits with your program. And then finally, I will share with you some organizing tips. Um, so if this all sounds good and like a great way that you can engage your 4-H members, um, I'll give you some organizing tips for how you can bring Text Talk Act to your chapter. So as I mentioned, I'm with the National Institute for Civil Discourse. 
we are actually part of the University of Arizona at Tucson, Arizona. We were created um, after the Tucson mass shooting that happened here, uh, where Representative Gabrielle Gifford um, and others were shot at a supermarket during a town hall uh, Congress, Meet Your Congress on the Corner event. The University of Arizona wanted something good to come out of such a, a horrific event. And so they ended up creating the National Institute for Civil Discourse. And really what we do is we model um, the work that Representative Gabby Giffords is well known for. She was known for reaching across the aisle and working with people, even if they had a different point of view or position than she did. And so that's what we do in our organization. We work to bring people together to talk about tough issues. Um, and so obviously mental health is one of those issues that can be really hard to talk about. And so what we're doing is we're bringing tools and strategies to different groups so that they can have this conversation and bring mental health out of the shadows. So that's a little bit about us and me. I'd like to hear a bit about you. Um, so I'm going to launch this poll. And the poll is, tell us about yourself. And just let me know if you're a 4 volunteer, if, you're for, if you are a field level 4 staff, state level 4 staff, or other. And if you are, um, if you do check the other box, if you can enter in the chat box um, who you're here representing today, that would be great. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds here. We still have some people that are sending in their answers. Great. This is very helpful. We have 65% of you saying that you're field level 4-H staff, 6% are volunteers, 17% state level, and 14% other. Let me go ahead and close this poll, and then I can share it with you. And then for those of you that said other, um, some of the, the places that you're representing, we have Peg Christensen, that's at-risk coordinator for Fort Dodge Senior High. Um, we have a California State Ambassador, that's Trent. And Michelle is a Substance Abuse Prevention and Local Advisory Council for Mental Health. Um, so it sounds like we've got um, some great 4-H uh, representatives, volunteers, um, and partners. So let me tell you a little bit about the National Dialogue on Mental Health. This started after the Sandy Hook tragedy. Um, and so it was a real time, I think we all know in America, where we um, were shocked by such a, a horrific event. Um, but then also it was a time where I think Americans came to reflect about mental health and how we're hiding, we've been you know, traditionally hiding it in the shadows. Um, there's a number of different reasons for that. Um, but one of the things that, that was um, created with the National Dialogue was a way to get people talking about mental health. So President Obama called for a National Dialogue on Mental Health. Um, and he actually reached out to my executive director, uh, Car Carol Lukensmeyer, and said, we need somebody to help to lead the community conversations. We need somebody that can bring communities together and give them the tools that they need. Um, to have this conversation on mental health. So our organization, the National Institute for Civil Discourse, came together with five other organizations. And since uh, 2013, we have supported over 250 community dialogues. So these have been face-to-face -face dialogues. Lots of them have been large town hall events where members in the community have come together and talked about what the barriers to mental health are in their community and how to overcome those barriers. A large number of those communities are now moving into action planning and implementation to address those barriers 
Um, a lot of it also has to do with just raising awareness on mental health and speaking out um, about the fact that everyone has mental health and well-being, and it's something that we should be able to, to talk about um, and not hide in the shadows. So we implemented a three-tier strategy. We had lead cities, and those were mayor-initiated cities, so those ended up being 300 to 400 people events that happened all day on a Saturday um, that the mayor hosted. Um, the mayor was present for those events and sat with community members to talk with them and hear their concerns. We also had smaller community conversations. So we had a lot of community organizers that were on the ground that said, I want to bring this conversation to my community. And they worked at a more grassroots level, um, bring the conversation to use the toolkit that Creating Community Solutions um, created for them, um, which consisted of a discussion guide and a facilitator guide, and brought the community together that way. And then finally, we knew that we needed to have a youth-focused engagement. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but in terms of the Tech Talk Act component. But because three-fourths of all mental health problems present themselves before the age of 24, we knew that young people especially uh, were an audience that we needed to reach out to. Um, to begin to change the conversation and, and you know, to raise awareness about mental health and the fact that we all have it and that it's something that we need to take care of, just like our physical health. So with that, I have a polling question. I'm actually going to, rather than launch a poll, um, this is kind of an open-ended question, so I'm going to put it in the chat box and send it out to you. So what I would like to, to hear from you, and again, you can enter this, enter your responses in the chat, is how do you currently engage 4-Hers in your healthy living, mental health, or social, emotional, and well-being initiative. And I'd just love to hear um, some of your answers on how you go about doing that. just opening up my questions window. Okay, and I am the only one that can see these responses, so I'm going to just go ahead and read some of them to you. Um, so from the 4-H perspective, some things that you all are doing is in-club promotion activities. Um, so Carrie is doing in-school enrichment using curriculum. Um, Cindy is doing it through out-of-school programs. Carol through club activities and camping programs. Um, Trent, as a state ambassador this year, actually, um, he, let's see, he says, as a state ambassador, this is actually our platform for the year. Um, from my former experience, it was a county level. Uh, that sadly wasn't a lot. And then Sharon, we host a day camp on the 4th, uh, on the 4-H for on health. Great. Let me just open back up my slides here. So that's helpful to know different ways that you've been integrating kind of the healthy living initiatives and talking about mental health within your chapters. Um, we struggled with this at first. We actually tried to do an online discussion board. That was our first attempt at trying to get young people engaged and found that that um, type of uh, environment just didn't seem to work very well. Um, so, so the challenge for us was how can we engage, engage young people um, you know, they're especially not the type that's going to come to a town hall meeting on this all day on a Saturday. And so we needed to find a way to reach them where they were. Um, and again, to kind of modify our in-person discussions to fit their communication preferences. So that's how Text Talk Act was born. Um, basically, the way that it works is you gather people together. And so if you have a large group of people, say you have 100 people, uh, you would actually break them into smaller groups. So we focus on the small group discussion and interaction. So you gather groups of three to four people with one cell phone for their group. Whenever that group is ready, so this could happen at any time on the day of the event, they would text START to the number 89800. 
And this platform is actually live today, um, so I would encourage all of you to go ahead and test it and uh, so that you can kind of see how it works and see how the sequence of text messages happen. So after they text start to the number 89800, they receive a series of text messages that guides their small group through a conversation on mental health. Um, so some of the text messages are discussion questions where they talk with their small group about the, you know, about the discussion question um, and come up with answers. Others are polling questions where they text their answer back in. Um, there are some videos, so there's an interactive component um, in addition to some social media interactions. Um, and so this script, just that so you know the history of it, was it started we basically took what we had created in the discussion guide and then converted it into a text messaging format. We then added a brain trust. And so the brain trust consisted of mental health professionals. It consisted of dialogue experts. It had um, youth organizers. We, had, we, we knew that we needed to have you know, kind of a youth organizer present, the young people that were helping us. Um, with getting the questions right, and then it also has social media experts. So we've gone through a number of iterations with this script, um, and it, you know, it, it's been in concert with this larger brain trust. Um, what we've heard from students is that they love using the text messaging technology to lead them through a conversation that they otherwise really wouldn't know how to have. Um, as we all know, mental health is a really um, hard thing to bring up. How do you talk about it? Um, so just, I just wanted to share this slide that has some pictures of our brain trust members and then also some of our youth organizers that have helped to champion Tech Talk Act at their schools and college campuses. In addition to the brain trust, we've also engaged partners uh, around Tech Talk Act. And so, like I had mentioned earlier, 4-H is an official partner, um, and we're collaborating for a November 10th event, which I'll talk more about in a minute. But a lot of these partners either host the Tech Talk Active Day with us, uh, or they help us to promote it to their networks. We focus a lot on middle schools, high schools, and colleges. We found that this is a really great program for those age groups. So the results, what's happened so far, um, we've had four nationwide Text Talk Act events. Uh, we've had 27,500 young people participate in this program. From survey data, we know that they are all ethnically and geographically diverse. They've participated from all 50 states. And then finally, we've had over, and this, is pro this number is probably higher now, but we've had over 21.3 million impressions on social media. So as I mentioned, there's a social media component where um, groups can send in on, on Twitter, Facebook, their social media platform of their choice, a selfie of their group talking about mental health, um, and they use the hashtag Text Talk Act. What that does is it allows them to see young people all across the country that are also engaging in this conversation on mental health, which helps to further break that stigma and raise awareness that it's okay to talk about mental health. It's like it's okay to talk about your broken arm. I have a couple more slides where I want to talk about Tech Stock Act, and then I'm going to go to questions um, in case you have questions about how the platform works before we really talk about the collaboration this fall with 4-H. So one other thing that I want to make sure you all um, have the information on is that through the University of Arizona, we conducted an independent evaluation. And our researchers found through this independent evaluation that participating in Tech Talk Act actually leads to a significant increase in participants' ability to talk about the topic of mental health, their likeliness to seek information, and, and, and also their knowledge on where to go to seek information and implement skills from Tech Talk Act. And then my favorite was there, it also increases significantly their ability to recognize a peer in need and then their ability to know what to do to reach out to that peer in need. This is part of the beautiful story. When we first started Text Talk Act, we really focused on 
having participants come together to talk about why mental health is important and what they can do to take care of their mental health. That was the first Text Talk Act that we created. And then we got feedback from young people. They said, this is great, and it's really helpful for me to know what I can do to take care of my well-being. But I want to know what to do if I'm the person in a room and my friend is struggling with an issue. I want to know how to respond and what to say. And it was just, to me, it was so beautiful that we heard that um, you know, throughout all of the feedback that first time around, that really young people want to be able to help others. And so now with this version of Text Talk Act, there is a sense of empowerment in that they know what to do. They know where to go if they themselves need support. And then they also know what to say to a friend in need. The other thing that we've consistently heard back, and we heard this in the independent evaluation, is that participants report very positive experiences using the technology. They really love using the text messaging. It's such a preferred form of communication to them. It gives them a higher comfort level. The other thing to know is that with the cell phone, this was, this was interesting and, and kind of, we didn't understand that this was what was going to happen at first. But with this cell phone, it takes away the dynamic of meeting a facilitator or a teacher at the front of the room. So it's still important to have adults there to help them to get organized and get them started on the activity. And it's important you know, to have an adult in case they want to continue a conversation afterwards. But the great thing is that the cell phone actually becomes the facilitator. It delivers the questions. And the questions are designed to encourage discussion. Um, and so when that happens, it becomes more of a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. I'm going to share a story with you um, about one of these kind of aha moments. So we had a licensed therapist in Delaware. She had a therapy group that she had been meeting with um, on a regular basis. They were all adolescent boys. And today, had been diagnosed with a mental health illness after they had been criminally charged. So these adolescent boys were actually in a mental health hospital. And this therapist was working with these boys and doing group therapy um, for a series of, of different events. And she said one day, she said, I'm, you know, I'm going to bring Tech Talk Acts into this and just see how it works with these boys. And she immediately sent us an email afterwards saying that she was just amazed at the result. Um, and so what happened was even though these boys had been meeting with each other through a therapy session, by using the phone, it gave them a higher level of confidence in that that's the way that they prefer to communicate anyway. And they're just more comfortable communicating that way. And so by getting the questions delivered through the phone, they had a more engaged and rich discussion. And what ended up happening is that these boys, through the discussion, realized the first time that they weren't alone and that they were struggling with very similar things to what their peers in that therapy group were struggling with. And so once that became known, there was a much higher comfort level and a lot more sharing that happened. And as a result of that conversation, they became a peer support network for each other. And they really rallied together to talk about how they can help to support each other because they're all dealing with the same, the, you know, similar types of issues. She was amazed because this group had been meeting already in a therapy session, but it wasn't until Text Talk Act that they were really able to have that open and honest conversation. One other thing that I want to share with you and then we'll go to, to questions about how the platform works, is the independent evaluation um, also found um, that participants that came into the conversation reporting slight to no familiarity with talking about mental health, right? So we asked participants at the beginning of the conversation how comfortable or how familiar they were with the topic of mental health. So we had some that, you know, are participants in, you know, active minds chapters, but, you know, that's what they do. They do a lot of mental health awareness and they're very well educated in, you know, how you talk about mental health and what the different issues are. But then we had others that were more in a school setting that had never talked about mental health before. 
And so the researchers took that data statement, took those participants out, and looked at the difference of their knowledge at the beginning of the, the event to the end of the event. And what they found was that those that came into the conversation with the least amount of knowledge actually moved along the spectrum further in terms of their ability you know, to do those things that I talked about before, which was you know, their, their um, comfort level in talking about mental health, their ability to know where to go to get resources and to access those resources, and then also the, their ability um, to recognize a peer in need and reach out to that peer in need. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because this, what we found is Tech Talk Act is very um, effective, especially for groups that haven't had this type of conversation before. And then I, I <laughs> one more thing, and then we're going to go to questions. Apologize for that. Um, so the next thing that I just want to let you know is we also ask participants what are the best ways to engage youth on the topic of mental health. And we have the rank order of these responses that you see in this table. What they said was that the first best way is through face-to-face -face conversation. The next best way to engage us is through social media. And then the third best way is through Text Talk Act. The thing that I love about these responses is that Text Talk Act actually integrates all three of those. So it integrates the face-to-face -face conversation, it integrates the social media, then obviously we're delivering it through the text messaging. Even if you look at the fourth one, school-sponsored activities, um, Tech Talk Act can come to schools through school-sponsored activities. So we're really hitting um, all, you know, the top four with with our one program. So with that, let me just put questions and see if you all have any questions about how the platform works. So go ahead if there's something that you, that I didn't cover that you'd like to know about how it works, what the questions are, that sort of thing. Go ahead and enter those in the chat box, and then we can do a little bit of the question answering. Okay, let's see. So one question is, will the surveys be done on the one phone? Um, I, so I think if you can clarify that a little bit. Um, I think what you mean is when they, when they text in their responses, will, they, will it be done on the one phone? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, when they text their responses in from the script, uh, they will use just the one phone to text the responses in. So most of the time they're, they're brainstorming questions. One of the questions that we ask is what can schools or communities do to help improve mental health? And so they would brainstorm that, that question and then text their group responses in. Um, when we do, at the end, we do have an evaluation survey. We send that to the phone that they've done it on. So they can share that link with other participants if the other participants want to participate in the evaluation survey, um, or they can go through it and do it on their phone as a group. And the next question is, do we purchase cell phones for the activities? And then if so, are there suggestions for certain phones or low-cost options? One of the things that we have realized with Text Talk Apps, because at first I was very concerned about, will people be enough phones? The great thing is that you only need one phone for your small group. We do recommend groups of three to four because there's there's videos involved, and so it, we've just found that it works better, you know, to have no more than you know four or five people hovering over a phone to watch a video. If cell phones are an issue, um, and we've had this come up with schools in the past, we do have um, an alternative, which is a PowerPoint slide deck. And so you could literally have the PowerPoint slides on one laptop or perhaps up on the screen on a main laptop. Um, and then the student could work through the questions that way. We do recommend the, the cell phone um, design because students do prefer to use their cell phones. 
and really any cell phone that can do text messaging will work for this event. Like I said, there are some videos, so if they didn't have data associated with their phone, um, you could either show the videos on the screen or they could just skip that portion and still have a meaningful conversation about Text Talk Act. And then what kind of reporting is there with Text Talk Act? Um, so in terms of reporting, and uh, Lisa, go ahead and clarify if I'm not if I'm not getting this question correct in terms of what you mean by reporting. Um, but in terms of reporting, so, so this may be a privacy and data question. One of the things to know is that we do not share cell phone numbers. We don't sell cell phone numbers. We don't store cell phone numbers. Um, so in terms of that, you know, people's responses are anonymous. We do collect the data that they text in, but again, it's kind of around brainstorming questions on what other groups can do to improve mental health um, and things that you know that we'd like to hear a youth voice around. Uh, so, in terms of that, that's kind of the only reporting that we do is we do collect anonymous data and then can make the report available. And then Gail has a question: What period of time does the conversation take place in? Great question. Um, it can take anywhere from 45 minutes. To one hour. It just depends on how long the group wants to go into some of the discussion questions, but we've found that one hour is kind of the upper limit and the most that we can get young people to kind of sit around and have a discussion for. Um, next question. My concerns are on the emotional safety of participants. How are the adult moderators selected? I could see where some personal disclosures would need some follow-up intervention. Um, that's a great question. One of the things that we get, that, we get a question similar to that a lot of times about concerns. Um, and one of the things that we always recommend is for you to look through the text messaging, or I can even send you the script so you can see the sequence of questions. Text Talk Act is really a mental health awareness activity. Um, it's a very positive activity, and what we have found is that students come away feeling more empowered and engaged and wanting to you know, to take action to help raise awareness on mental health. It's not intended to be a, you know, crisis management um, conversation or anything like that. For that, you know, we definitely recommend a suicide hotline. Towards the end of the conversation, we do provide participants with um, a resources page. At the very top is if you need help, here's the, here's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline number. We also are partners with Crisis Text Line. And they have a similar platform where students can actually text in to their crisis text line and get um, immediately a mental health professional to talk with via text messaging. Um, and then in addition to that, on the resources page, it's a lot of information like, you know, treatment locators, but mostly, you know, what we find is that people want to know, how do I continue the conversation? How can I take action? How can I raise awareness? And so we include a lot of information on there as to how they go about doing that. We do always recommend that there's an adult present to help to form the groups and get them together, and then to be there in case there are questions that come up. But we really haven't found, um, with the, you know, the 27,000 students that we've done, that there's a, a big need um, to have you know, a therapist right there on site um, during that time. If you can, that's great. Um, but you know, really, it's a mental health awareness raising activity. And then the next one is, could you be more specific in terms of how this helps students identify mental health illness in others? Great question, Stephanie. Um, so we obviously don't include information on how they could diagnose somebody with mental health, um, with a mental health illness. What we do is we get students thinking about, you know, if their friend or somebody is down or um, you know, isn't as interactive or kind of withdrawing, acting differently than they have in the past. And then what we do is actually through a video share with them tips on how they can help their friend. Um, lots of times it's, you know, it's kind of around a message of kindness and just reaching out and taking that person for a walk and just listening, just being there for them. Um, but then also through directing them to resources, it gives them the information that they then um, need to connect them and to say, hey, you know, maybe if you want to talk to somebody, then you could go here. And then, you know, there's that, that web page with all of the different resources. 
and Mary has asked, how do you promote and organize an activity? I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, so let me keep going through some of these questions. Trent has asked, is it preferred that it's implemented over the three specific days, or is it open over a time frame? That's a great question. Um, I'll talk about this in a minute, but we are doing it over three nationwide days where we're trying to get everyone together during that time. However, the platform is open, and you can, like I mentioned, you can try it now and go through the sequence of text messages. So if that, if, if say November 10th doesn't work for your group, I still would very much encourage your group to do it on a different day. Um, we've left the platform open so that way it can be available if you say your group meets on a different day, you can still do it on that day. Michelle has asked, will a list of local resources be made available to the groups? Yes, absolutely. So at the very end, one of the last text messages they received is that link to the resources page. And it has a treatment um, identifier, a treatment locator. It's actually SAMHSA's treatment locator so that they could get connected in their community. And then the last question. Um, but I think I won't be covering in the later slides. So some of these I'm just skipping because I'm going to go over them in just a minute. But the last question is, how do you engage the adults to not be overly involved, knowing it can happen and will skew the process? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a great question. And so what we encourage the adults to do is to help with the promotion, help to get them together. They can even provide food. That's always a great way um, to get young people together. And then to help them get organized in their small groups. The great thing is once the kids get into their cell phone and their small group, um, the adults, unless they're going to try and hover, they're really not part of the conversation at that point. Um, so we really recommend that adults, they can walk around um, in case there's you know, a question that comes up or whatever, but we really recommend that adults let the kids have the conversation um, and, and just let them, let them talk um, in the ways that they would with it to their peers. All right, let me get into this fall and the plans with 4-H. Um, so there are actually three nationwide dates where we are hosting Tech Talk Act, and I'll tell you what I mean by nationwide dates in a minute. Um, but they are October 5th and October 6th. Now, both of those dates are coming up very quickly, I, I do recognize. October 5th, we are doing in collaboration with Active Minds for their National Day Without Stigma. And then October 6th, we are doing with Each Mind Matters. Now, November 10th is the date that I really want you all to focus on. That is the day where we're doing it in collaboration with 4-H, and we're also doing it in collaboration with the National Association for School Psychologists. October 6th and 5th and 6th is right around the corner, but November 10th is plenty of time um, to organize an event and to get students together. And it's also the day where we really want to have 4-Hs from across the country doing text talk act on the same day. So that way when they go to social media and they see pictures of young people, they're saying those are 4-H chapters across the country that are also engaged in this conversation. So November 10th is the date that we'd like you to focus on. Doesn't mean that you can't do it on the 5th and the 6th of October. You could even try it as a pilot if you wanted to get a couple of students together to just test it out and see how it works. That's absolutely fine. Um, but definitely November 10th, consider hosting a larger event with your chapter. Now, what do I mean by nationwide events? Like I mentioned, Text Talk Act is available right now. Anyone can do Text Talk Act on the platform. However, we're hosting nationwide events because we want young people to feel like they're part of a larger conversation, because they are. So on those nationwide events, that's when we're really getting groups to come together and get organized. And again, you know, the social media aspect, when they go to social media, they're going to see all this activity. The other thing is when they text in some of their ideas, we provide them with links to, live, to the live web page where they can see their idea on the web page along with everybody else's. So there's a lot of energy and fun around it. The other thing that's kind of fun that we do on those three days is we do a contest. So you can sign your 4-H chapter up for contest, and I encourage all of you to do that. This is the link. As I mentioned, I'll send you this link afterwards. So if you registered for this email, you'll get this information. The way that it works is on the day of the event, um, so on October 5th, October 6th, and or November 10th, we have a text message in the sequence of, of Text Talk Act text messages that asks people for the unique organizer code. 
if you sign your 4-H chapter up for the contest, you'll get a unique organizer code, which you then share with your participants. They text the organizer code in, and that then gives your 4-H chapter credit for their participation. The groups that get the most participants end up winning either $1,000 or $500 for, their, for the category that they sign up for. We have um, college categories, high school and middle school categories, and uh, organization club categories. So to learn more, that's the link. I will send that to you. But I encourage you all to sign up for the contest. It's a great way too, to bring students together to say, hey, let's do this contest and participate in Text Talk Act. And we might be able to win money for a chapter to then be able to go and do X, Y, Z. So there's two main things um, that you can do with all this information. The first and foremost is help to organize Text Talk Act with your chapter this fall. As I mentioned, you could use the time leading up to November 10th to test the platform, look at the questions, see if it's a conversation that you think your chapter members would be interested in engaging in. And then, if so, organize a, a chapter-wide or even larger community event. I'd encourage you to focus on November 10th, but again, the platform is open. You could do it a different day if November 10th didn't work for you. And then second, you can help to promote Text Talk Act. So if there's other groups or people in your network that you think might be interested, share this information with them. Um, send them my information. I'll connect with them and let them know, you know what this program is and how it works. OK, so let's say you've done Text Talk Act, you really like it, and you want to bring it to your, your chapter or your program. There's a couple of tips that I would recommend for you to get organized. The first thing that I always recommend is to try it even on your own. So I realize some of them are discussion questions, so it's going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit weird, but definitely try to do it on your own on your phone. So um, right after this webinar is over, go ahead and text START to the number 89800, and then just follow through the prompts. This gives you a much better idea of how the technology works. This is a really innovative program, so we found just trying it out on your phone to understand how it works is really the best way to understand it. Um, and it lets you see the discussion questions. Now, the other thing is I have a script. So if you wanted to see all the discussion questions, say, in a Word document, just send me an email, and I'll send you the script so you can see the entire sequence um, of text messages. So after you try it and decide that you want to do it, we recommend that you form a team of people. Um, and so for that, you know, you're going to know best who those people are. We really recommend that you have a couple, at least a couple young people that are helping um, to get other young people to come and do it. Um, youth organizers work great. You could consider doing things with teachers if you wanted to do it with a broader school, mental health professionals, you know, the school guidance counselors, that sort of a thing. So think about you know, who best would be on your team to help to promote Text Talk Act to your chapter or your, to your community. And then whoever is on your kind of inner team, definitely have them try Text Talk Act. And you could actually all sit down and do Text Talk Act together so that everybody understands how it works. And then next, we do recommend once you get your team formed is to make a plan. So there's, there are certain things you have to decide. You have to decide where you're going to do your event. You have to decide when you're going to do it. Um, as I mentioned, if you picked November 10th to do it, because all the other 4-Hers are going to be doing it that day, you could do it at any time through November 10th. So it doesn't have to be November 10th at 5 o'clock. It could be any time during that day. So whatever works for your group, that's when you can do it. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, consider opening Text Talk Act up to others in the community. So you could, you know, you could do it with just your chapter, or if you wanted to do a larger thing within your community, get 4-Hers to get involved, to bring people in, you could definitely open it up. And then especially if you are opening it up beyond your chapter, um, one of the next things to do is to start spreading the word. If you sign up for the contest, you can actually order um, free flyers. And we have little cards that are kind of like the size of business cards. On the flyers, you can put the you know who, what, when, where in terms of the event that you're planning. And you can add the organizer code. Um, on the little business cards, you put the organizer code and you can put the date. So definitely, you know, if you decide to do a larger event, 
you'll want to order those. Because we'll show those to you. It's free of charge. Um, the whole platform is free of charge. And um, so that way, you know, it can help just to advertise Tech Stock Act within the schools or your community, that sort of thing. And one of the things that we have found works really well and always does when you're organizing such things is to consider doing personal invitations. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're group of young people that are helping to organize it, consider having them invite five friends or something like that. We've found that the personal invitations definitely, you know, get the higher response rate. And then some groups have done food um, as part of the incentive. So we've had some groups that have just opened it up in their cafeteria after school and they've offered pizza or different types of food and just said, you know, come on over, sit down, have a slice of pizza and do tech stock apps at your table. That's worked really well. Um, other groups have added prizes. Um, so we have one group in Birmingham this year that's going to give um, $100 as a cash prize, and I think it's going to be through a raffle with participants. Um, so that's another option. And then, again, I'll send you these links. Uh, but we also have an organizing guide that has a lot more tips um, and ideas on how you could put your event together. There's the website uh, or the web page for signing up for the contest. And then we also have a specific schools page. Um, so, you know, if you do plan to do this as an after school activity, um, there are some tips in there for doing it, you know, either as an after school activity or during the school day. We have a teacher lesson plan that kind of lets the teacher know how to set up the classroom and that sort of thing. So lots of resources are available on our website. And again, I'll send you that link. And then there's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me. Again, I'll be emailing you all this information after the webinar, so you'll have my email um, so long as you've registered for the webinar ahead of time. Um, so yes, please feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions that you may have. Um, with that, I am going to go to questions back in the chat box um, to see if others came in, especially around kind of the organizing. Feel free to text more in as I'm going over the ones that are already in here. So Denise asked, can we do Text Talk Act after November 10th? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, truth be told, we will have the Text Talk Act platform available through the entire month of November, and it's likely it will still be up in December. Um, but definitely through, no, through the month of November, you'll be able to do it. Gail asked, did you mention what the ages of the youth participants are? Great question. We have done Tech Talk Act in middle schools, high schools, and colleges. Um, it's worked well with all of those groups. I wouldn't recommend it in an elementary school setting. I'd love to create a Tech Talk Act for elementary students, but I think the questions that are in there now, they're just not going to be able to relate the way that they're worded. Um, so definitely be considering this for middle, middle school, high school, and college. Oh, and Catherine has a great question. Will the platform be available into and through 2016? We have statewide 4-H events forums in May and June that have great potential for TTA use and participation. The growth of Tech Stock Act is absolutely amazing. Um, and it's just, it's so wonderful. We first created Tech Talk Act thinking it was just going to be a one-time event. Um, but the feedback that we got um, was that we needed to keep doing it. So we've been following this model of doing kind of a fall and spring event every year. I'm actually trying to get us to the place where Tech Talk Act is always open and available. Because I think there's different groups that are going to want to do it through the year that's not going to fit into that one or two month window. Um, so we're definitely moving towards that. Uh, anyone that's interested in doing Tech Talk Act into next year, definitely contact me so that we can make sure that the platform is available for you. Um, we're definitely very interested in, in, in ensuring that everybody that wants to do it, uh, when it fits their, their needs, to be able to do it. We've also had professors, I in particular have one professor out of Florida that wants to do Tech Talk Act in her nursing program. She did it the last time around, got, and it was just terrific. She added it into their mental health curriculum for nurses. Um, and she wants to be able to have it available so that she can count on it every semester for when they do their mental health curriculum. So it's definitely something that we are moving toward. 
um, and we'll at least have the spring event next in 2016, but I am hoping that we'll just have it completely open. So if you've got events next year, contact me and we'll make sure we can make it happen. Um, and Denise asked about the script. If you would like a copy of the script, just email me. And again, like I said, I'm going to send you all an email afterwards. You'll have my email address and I'm more than happy to send you the script. I also mentioned earlier, if you can't do it through cell phones, we do have PowerPoint slides. I, you know, I recommend the cell phones, but if you can't do it through cell phones, I can send you the PowerPoint slides as well. And then Debbie asked, will you continue to keep us updated on upcoming information since you have our emails? Yes, I absolutely will. Um, and make sure that you know about um, you know, the latest and the greatest. It is possible, given the interest with the 4-Hers, um, that we work with 4-H in the future to do even more around Tech Talk Act so that we can bring this um, to, your, to your chapters and your programs. Uh, Jenna asks, can small individual groups participate that may not be able to make it to a larger event? Absolutely. Um, the great thing is you can have as small of a group or as large of a group as you want. And so don't be discouraged if you, you know, if you can't put together a big event for November 10th. I would still highly recommend that you do it with whoever you have um, so that you can try it out um, and you know, it never hurts. Yeah, I always think of, you know, maybe it's that one kid that just needs to have this conversation on this day. So don't feel discouraged if you can't get a big event together and you can just get a couple of kids together because you just never know who needs to have that conversation. Uh, Michelle has asked, if events are held multiple, multiple days, will it still count for the contest? And so her example is November 10th and 11th. The contest days are only on October 5th, 6th, and November 10th. You can still do Tech Stock Act on November 11th, but the participation won't count towards the contest, unfortunately. Um, and that's just because we've tried to create a big splash around those specific days so we can get as many people together um, during those days as possible. Sarah asked a question, have there ever been any technical issues with cell phones and service? It's a great question. Um, some cell phones, as I mentioned, you text start to the number 89800. That number is actually called what's called a short code. Some cell phones, based on text messaging carriers um, and their plan, some cell phones don't allow short codes. If you go to our website, you'll see there's actually an alternative number. So if on the day of the event they text start into 89800 and it doesn't work on their phone, there's a longer number that they can use. And we heavily promote it on the, the nationwide events that people have this through social media and stuff, but it's also on our website. So um, that usually works if it's, if it's a short code issue. Um, some places have had cell phone reception issues. So it's always good to consider that um, when you're thinking about where to hold it. Um, for example, we had a community college that knows that there's this one spot on campus where students get the best reception. So that's where they held their event. Um, so definitely be thinking that through. Again, if you live in an area where it's just notorious for cell phone reception issues, we can always see the PowerPoint slides as a backup. Um, but again, I encourage using the cell phones because the kids just love how, how it works. Debbie has asked, is each contest day a separate contest, or will those dates add up for a total? Great question. Those dates will add up for a total. So if you you know, if you wanted to get even some small groups together on the 5th and the 6th and then do your big event for November 10th because you need more time to put that together, it's cumulative. So however many people you can get on those three dates, it will all add up together. And then um, Sharon, and I hope I'm saying your name right, said just a comment. I'm excited, looking forward to this event. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm excited too. I'm really looking forward to working with the 4 hers um, Mary has asked, how much time should you plan for this event? And um, we recommend 45 minutes to an hour. You could set it up a different, slightly different. So you could have it set up so that everybody comes at the same time and they all start at the same time. Or you could just have it set up for a number of hours and students could just come in when it works for their schedule, sit down with a group, and do text talk act. So it really depends on how you want to organize um, how you want to organize that event. But when they sit down and text into the number, 
it's typically 45 minutes to an effort to get that, to get that group through the conversation. All right, I think I've made it through all of the questions. Um, feel free to add any more in if, you, if there's other burning questions that you have. Otherwise, um, don't hesitate to email me. I'm here to help uh, you get you know, organized and to offer you tips and strategies for text Huck Acts. If there's questions that you think of later as you're talking with other people that I didn't address, please feel free to reach out to me and um, we'll work through all of those different questions. Raquel, this is Doug. Hi, Doug. Hey, great presentation, and I don't want to limit people from asking a few more questions before we end here, but I want to thank you and, and highlight again um, our partnership and, and how wonderful it is that we had you know at least 40 different groups on here today. And I, I thought some of the questions were great because you know there's so many 4-H camps and conferences in June especially, and and wouldn't that be neat to, to be able to do something around some of those things? But I encourage you, to, everybody, to try it on November 10th. You know, and, and and if you can't do it on a big countywide or community-wide event, you know, maybe you have 4-H clubs meeting that day, and just encourage them to do it as part of their club meeting. Um, maybe you have uh, after-school programs. You know, maybe maybe that you could do it that day. And and again. Raquel has been very uh, clear that it doesn't have to be that day, but one of the things that I was wondering, Raquel, was you have your hashtag, and I know you don't want to get things mixed up in hashtag land, but if you think of any suggestions on how the 4-Hers could make sure that uh, they know there's other 4-Hers that day oh, doing yeah. it in their social media, whether it be hashtag TikTok Act 4-H or whether it be uh, just some other way, you know, think about that because I think it'd be cool if they know other 4-Hers are doing it. You know, one thing, I, I, I love that suggestion, Doug, and I think that there's a lot of value um, in even pulling out the 4-Hers that are doing it, especially on November 10th. So one thing that we could do on, on the date of November 10th, because that is the nationwide one for 4-H, is in the text message where we encourage groups to, to post a selfie um, to include that, you know, hashtag text talk acts, and uh, we could do hashtag 4-H. I'm, I'm assuming that you guys typically use hashtag 4-H. Right, on, sure. Yeah, yeah. And so that way, even if you just search by hashtag 4-H um, on, like, say, Twitter, you'd see all the 4-Hers that were doing it. So, yeah, let's let's talk more about that, but we can definitely do that so that way you all can see, you know, the big splash um, that 4-H is making across the country. And I was just curious, and some of this we can talk offline, but I think it might be helpful for those on, too. Will, will there be a way that, that we know how – I mean, they don't register as a group or anything, so will we know how many 4-H people participated? Will we have any idea? Um, there's a couple of ways that we could get an idea. So especially, you know, those 4-H clubs that sign up for the contest will know exactly how many contestants from 4-H are running. Um, there's some other questions. I, I, I mentioned this one earlier, but there's a question that some schools and communities do amazing things to promote mental health. What can your school or community do? And um, they actually go to a live web page and they can type in the name of their school or their um, organization name. And so if we, on November 10th, had all the participants in that field put 4-H, we could get a better idea of how many 4-Hers we had participating based on the cell phone numbers. Yeah, we're, not looking, thing, we're not looking for anything official or anything, but just yep. an idea of, of yep. you know. And, and we know that this webinar is October 1st today and, and two of your events are next week during National 4-H week, but we just didn't have enough time to really focus on on National 4-H week when we got together, you know, not that many mm -hmm. weeks ago. So so we hope the November 10th will give everybody a, a little more chance to pull it together. Yep, I love it and I, I love the idea too of, you know, let's look towards June when, you know, lots of 4-H um, Camps and stuff are happening. To see if we can get, you know, a, another um, large 4-H presence with Tech Talk Act. So I, I think that this could be the start of a of a great partnership between Tech Talk Act and, and all of your programs. And I would encourage 
the 4-H agents that are at the field level, which many of today's participants are, talk to your family consumer science agent that may be in the neighboring county or in your same office because they may have an interest in partnering with you too because they have all different kinds of programs that you know better than I do that might fit very well and they might have new audiences that new ways to reach people. So. Great. And just as we were talking, Catherine um, sent in a suggestion that we could do hashtag PTA4H plus state or club hashtag. Um, so yeah, Doug, let's talk more about how we can do the hashtags on November 10th. That way we have clear guidance um, out to you know the, the field level staff and, and those that are organizing it on, on how, to, how to best organize that piece. Any other questions that you have coming in, Raquel? That that was it in terms of questions. I think we made it all the way through. Well, I just I just want to thank you again. I think this is exciting, and and uh, for all of you on the call, uh, please try this and let us know. Um, uh, Ra Raquel, could in the email you send out, could you include my contact information too, so if they want to Absolutely. ask a question from a 4-H perspective, that they could reach me as well. Yep, I definitely will do that. We'd love to hear Great. what you think. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your busy days to, to, to learn more um, about Tech Stock Act, and I look forward to working with you all. Thanks thank again. You. Have a good day. Bye.